YouTube, I'm back. Stay tuned for pages 1 through 59 of The Science of Black Hair um, by Audrey Davis Sinusovi. This is part two, you guys. This is going over the health of the scalp, um, the construction of the hair strand, as well as um, porosity. What causes it, how to prevent it in your hair, you guys. I know you guys have been blowing them up on that one. So stay tuned if you want to learn about that. Let's get started. Hey guys, so I am dedicating this episode to my subby, 827 Honey One. She was having a lot of issues with porosity, was really having issues with retaining her moisture and freaking out and wanted to know if there was any, you know, hints in the book. She's waiting for her book to get there. She's trying to get her book and she's kind of freaking out. After you guys watch this video, please help her. You know, this is a positive community. Please, if you know anything about hair porosity, please post your comments. Let her know what you did to help your hair. Anyway, without further ado, this is for you, 827 Honey One. We're going to start with the scalp first and then it's going to go into the hair shaft because you need to understand those two things before you can understand hair porosity, okay? So I'm going to read you from page 28. The subcutaneous layer houses the scalp's dense supply of blood vessels and fatty tissue. The dermis, or the middle layer, contains a network of collagen protein that lends strength and support to the skin. And the uppermost level, the epidermis, is roughly 50 cells thick and is the layer we encounter and work with on a daily basis. To your healthy scalp. She says when the scalp's natural flaking process is disrupted and the moisture content of the scalp skin drops below roughly 10%, dandruff and other scaly scalp irritation issues arrive. So dandruff is simply the result of an accelerated skin cell turnover at the upper scalp level. Okay. Then she went to talk about the sebaceous gland, which she said is part of a follicle and produces sebum. Sebum's main job is to condition the skin and act as a barrier to prevent internal moisture loss. When products are placed directly on the scalp and are allowed to build up, okay, scalp conditions become unfavorable and problems with the scalp dryness and hair growth can arise. The scalp, like any other skin, needs to be able to breathe. Heavy oil concoctions inhibit optimal functioning of the scalp by clogging the pores and creating an unhealthy environment for hair growth. So, it's important that you do not let it build up. If you're going to use the heavy oils and everything else, that's great. Don't let your products and don't let things build up on your scalp. That's why I like pre pooing with my castor oil. As you guys know, I have a link at the end to the hot castor oil hair growth challenge. I like pre pooing with it because then after I'm done pre pooing with it, I wash it off and I get it off the scalp. So I feel like that helps to prevent scalp buildup. Then she went into the shaft. She said the shaft is the part of the hair fiber that we see on a daily basis. So all of this is the shaft, okay? And she said it is composed primarily of keratin proteins, lipids, water, and different binding materials for these molecules. The hair's protein structure controls its various physical characteristics, including its general appearance, its ability to absorb water and chemicals, and its overall strength and quality. The medulla, also known as the pith, or the marrow is the innermost layer of the hair shaft and is typically only found in thick, coarse hair. Natural blondes and those with thin, fine hair strands typically do not have this inner space in their hair shafts. The cortex is where the hair strength and elasticity originate. She said this makes up the greatest percentage of the hair. It makes up like, I think she said 80 to 90% of the hair's total weight. The cuticle, which is very important you guys, is the outer protective layer that um, shields the cortex from the elements. The cuticle is made up of five to 11 overlapping sheets of cell arranged like shingles on a roof. The number of layers reduces significantly from root to tip due to natural weathering and damage, okay? Rather than simply being stacked one upon the other, each layer of the cuticle is attached or anchored to the cortex at its base. 
thicker stranded hairs tend to have more overlapping layers with lengthier scales, okay? Then she said, the healthy appearance of hair depends almost entirely upon the condition of the cuticle. Tattered worn cuticles reflect light poorly and increased, fr and increased friction between raised cuticle layers prevents the hair from moving well. She said the farther down the hair shaft we progress, the more vulnerable the damage, the damage the hair generally becomes due to lifting and destruction of the cuticles. It is not uncommon for cuticle degradation at the very tip of the hair shaft to be so complete that the cortex is exposed, okay? The cortex, that means your hair's innermost strength and elasticity are exposed. So when I first read that, you guys, I couldn't grasp the concept in the book until I read the whole book and then I went back and I was like, oh. So I thought I would create something, hopefully visually for you guys this time around so I could figure it out. But this is my little makeshift science project. I don't know if you can see it, but this is my little diagram. You see how pieces are missing. So basically the knife that's inside of here, this little piece is basically like your um, medulla. Okay, so that's the innermost part that only a lot of people with natural hair and um, that people with thick coarse hair have. So it's known as the pith or the marrow of the hair. The pink part, since she said it makes up 90% of the weight of the hair shaft, that's um, my example of the cortex. So the pink part is where your strength and your uh, elasticity come from. And then the lime green pieces, you guys, are like the cuticles, okay? So I wanted you to see this because as you see, I'm trying to emulate what she said. As you go down, sorry, down the shaft of your hair strand, pieces of your cuticle are like exposed. You know, pieces are missing, okay? That's what happens is it wears with time. The reason that we are so concerned about how you handle your hair, why you see a lot of us smoothing products down the hair and not up the hair, is because as you smooth down, you're smoothing with the cuticle, right? Nice and smoothly. If you go up, what are you doing? You're going against the cuticle, you're ripping it up. And, and, and damaging it, okay, and, and exposing the pink part, right, which is your innermost strength, the, 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 um, the cortex, okay? Now, this is what's so important about the products that you use. When you're using products that are not pH balanced, okay, they cause, when you use something that's pH is too high, it causes your cuticle to lift. So now your cuticles are lifted. As they're lifting, right, they're lifted. You see all that all that pink is now exposed and now as they're lifting you see they're sticking out so they catch on the other hairs and they tangle more because they're not lying flat okay and because it's not closed moisture escapes easily so that's why it's important that you pH balance your products make sure you watch the other um, science black hair video review on pH balance so that you want to use products that after you're done washing your hair cause your cuticles to close nice and tightly like, so they lie really, really, really flat. You see that? You want your cuticles all the way down, protecting the pink bottle, which is like protecting your cortex, and keeping all the moisture and locking everything in, okay? So that's my little science project so you can see, you know, and you want to not comb your hair roughly or use seam combs because they shred the cuticle, they can rip them off and shred them, and now you're having less cuticles, you're damaging your cuticles, they're getting ripped, you know, they're getting torn, they're getting jagged by the comb. And then more and more of your inner cortex is exposed, okay? So that was kind of like making sense, and it's really important, I get it now, that depending on the pH balance, which affects porosity, which we're coming up to, your cuticles are either gonna be getting raised up too high, and they're staying in the raised state because you don't pH balance them with your product and lower them all the way back flat. Okay, so that was like a really big aha moment. I just thought I'd show it to you visually because I didn't get it the first time around either. Let me know if you did, if you're reading along. Okay, you guys. So now we're going on to hair porosity because it all ties together, okay? She said porosity varies by person depending on the condition and shape of the hair's cuticle layer. It's all about the cuticle layer, you guys. Porosity ties into the cuticle layer. I didn't know that the first time around when I read it. When your hair faces a traumatic styling event, such as a chemical relaxing or permanent coloring, its protein structure is attacked and its protective cuticle shielding becomes tattered and torn. Hair in this condition is said to be porous. 
To better understand, it is helpful to think of the hair like a wooden fence. When the fence is new, it is able to shield the yard it surrounds. As it ages, wood in the fence begins to soften, and the fence's once protective barrier can be breached. Over time, holes may appear in the fence or some planks may be missing in places. The fence has become porous. Our hair functions just like the fence. As it ages, the hair's protective cuticle layers begin to crack, peel, and lift away. This change in the cuticle's presentation and shape makes the hair less able to absorb and hold the moisture it once could. Hair that has low porosity, okay, doesn't readily absorb moisture or chemicals treatments and it's generally quite healthy. Like a brand new fence or fresh new growth on your hair, it has not been battered from styling yet. So now I'm going to read for you for page 47. The hair's pH and porosity characteristics are intimately connected, okay? So if you're having porosity issues, it is intimately connected to the pH of your hair and the pH of your products, your styling, and if it's chemically treated, you guys. There's always a scientific reason for what's going on in our hair. That's why I love this book. If you have a problem, there's a scientific reason and then you can figure out how to solve it. So I love it. So she says, low pH products and styling treatments reduce the hair's porosity by constricting the cuticles and causing it to tighten, okay? High pH products have the opposite effect and increase the hair's porosity by swelling and lifting the cuticle scales. High porosity is caused by anything that degrades or in any way changes the cuticle, including excessive mechanical abuse from heat styling tools, the sun, chemical relaxers and colors, and the use of sulfate-rich stripping shampoos. The more damage the cuticle has endured, the greater the hair's porosity and the more water or moisture it tends to absorb. She says, you're probably thinking, well, if my hair is dry, high moisture absorption is great, right? She says, well, not quite. The downside of this high level of absorption is the high level of moisture loss that results from it. Highly porous hair absorbs more water when wet, but loses even more water as it dries. When it is fully dried, porous hair feels swollen, puffy, and rough to the touch due to the lifted, damaged cuticle layers, which have instigated an inherent moisture deficiency. Keeping this type of hair moisturized is a feat as it tends to continuously soak in moisture without ever actually feeling moisturized. Such hair is chronically dry and will not stay moisturized unless proper measures are taken to correct the issue. Ah! Love Audrey, love the author. Yes, you've got to take the proper measures. Okay, so you guys, she does go on after that to talk about um, porosity implications for relaxed and color treated hair if you have chemically treated hair. So if you got the book on page 48, make sure you read that because that's important for the chemically treated girls, okay? She does give a helpful tip for, tip for girls that are chemically treated. So just to recap, porosity issues. I really hope this helped, 827 Honey One. You guys, if you are a girl that had high porosity in your hair and you corrected it, I need you to comment, leave comments so when she comes back and she checks and she watches this video, she won't be so overwhelmed and feel so alone. She was like, I'm gonna give up. She's like, I'm just gonna relax my hair, I don't know. So let's encourage her and help her and give her some good tips. That's what the channel's about, okay? I hope this video was helpful. If it was helpful, please thumbs me up. Dun, 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 dun. Please subscribe, you guys. Lots of great free videos. You guys, you've got to get the book. I cannot say it enough. I'm, I'm glad you're following the book review and that's great. And I want us to leave our comments because we learn more, but it is not going to all click and sink in your head. Like I didn't go over everything in here because you need to get the book. You've got to read it. Like I just want to know the top layer of the scalp. She goes all the way in and goes into the other different seven categories of each layer of the scalp and what they do and how you get your nutrients. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff that you just have to understand, which is going to make your hair thrive. So get the book. It's worth the money. Okay? Alrighty. Hope this I hope this helps. Lots of love. Mwah. Mwah.